This is the basic IK that I built in an earlier video. It has your standard IK controls and has an IK FK blending setup. However, when it comes to animating this, we have a major problem, and that comes from blending animation between the modes. It is always easy to blend from FK to IK. This is a reasonably natural process and it works easily in this case. We do, however, have a problem when it comes to blending from IK to FK. And that problem is that when you want to move from IK to FK, you usually want to start from where the IK finished. That is to say, you want the bones to be in exactly the same place from your FK as what they were in the IK. This is the system we will be building in this video. We have essentially the same IK controller and it will blend between IK and FK in the same manner as the previous controller we constructed. However, in this version, if I want the FK to match the IK, I can press this Match IK button, and the bones will conform to the position of the IK setup. This is the same as the previous IK FK setup, but I've removed a lot of the connection to the interface parameters to make it more straightforward to work with. The only parameter which I was still controlling here is the IK FK blend. In terms of the display, it may look slightly different, but these are purely display settings. When the tool is active, if you right click on the screen, you'll bring up a context menu. In this case, display length has been turned on, which will give me an indication of my FK. And I've turned display joints off to remove the dots from the screen. I'll start by editing the interface. I'll open my type properties and I'll add a button. I'll call this button Match FK. In this case, I'm only going to match the FK because the IK can always blend from zero. I'll also not be dealing with stretching and I'll only be working with rotation. Stretching will work in the same manner. I'm just only working with the rotation parameter rather than the rotation and translation. The button will need to be linked to a script. In this case, I'm just going to use the basic Python module. This will be accessed through the event handler dropdown. I'll create a function in this module, and this function will be called matchIK. I'll just print the function's name to test that it is working. Next, I'll need to add the basic functionality, so I'll return to the parameters menu. I need to give the button an appropriate label, and so I'll give the title matchFK. Then to access the script, I'll add a callback. This will start with who.phm. PHM is a direct reference to the Python module. This refers specifically to the Python module in the scripts tab. I can then call my function with dot match IK. Next, apply the changes and we'll test the button and I should get a printout of the function's name. So I'll start by getting the positions of the bones after the IK has been applied. In this case, it will be the final value which passes through the output node. I personally do not like extracting values from the output nodes, so instead I'll get a null. I'll call this null IKFK, and I'll place it between my solver and the output node. I will then want to get the local transforms for these points. It is possible to get these transforms through scripting, but I personally will prefer to have Houdini do that kind of work for me. So I'll use one of Houdini's native nodes, and this node is the Compute Rig Pose node. This is essentially the same node as the Rig Pose. The difference is that the Rig Pose is a wrapper which has a custom viewer state and a custom interface to set the values on this node. This node will need a source for its information, so we'll get an object merge node. In my object merge, I'll reference the IKFK node, and I'll specify the transform to be inside this object. Then in my compute rig post node, I'll promote the parameters. I can now set the attributes that I need. To see what my attributes are, I'll open the geometry spreadsheet. We can now specify which parameters we're going to take. First, we'll have the normal output parameters, and I'll make sure that all of these are off. However, you can also output internal data as an attribute, 
And what we're looking for is the local transform. And we can now see that the local transform shows up in the geometry spreadsheet. I want the local transforms because I'm going to be setting the values directly in the rig pose node. And we want to set the values in the rig pose node directly because we're not trying to override the data for the attributes. Instead, we're trying to pose the rig. I can now reopen my type properties because we have everything we need to start scripting. First, we'll need to create references, and the nodes we'll need to reference are the rig pose node and the compute rig pose node. First, I'll create a variable for my compute node. I'll get the reference using who.node. I'll then specify the node. First, I'll get a reference to the HDA itself. For this, I'll use who.pwd. PWD is a Unix reference, which stands for print working directory, unless I'm mistaken. And it will refer to the current node that the script is situated on. I'll then get its path with dot path. I can then specify the node that I want with backslash. And the node is compute rig pose one. Next, I'll want the pose node and I'll assign this with a variable called pose. Once again, I'll use who.node. I'll create a string starting with F so that I can format the string. And I'll have curly braces to enter a variable. Once again, this is who.pwd.path. And then I'll reference the node with backslash rig pose one. I'll then test that this is working correctly by printing out these variables. In order to get the attribute data, I'll first need to get all the points from the compute pose rig node. The variable will be points. We will then use compute.geometry.points. This will give us a list of all the points, and I can loop over this list with for x in points. First, I want to get the name attribute. I'll get this in a variable name. We'll get the name with x.attrib value and the argument will be name. I can then test again by printing the values. The next attribute to get will be the local transform. The transform will be stored in a 4x4 matrix. I'll store this in the variable m and we'll get a matrix using who.matrix4. And the argument will be x dot attrib value with the attribute being local transform. And once again, I can print to test that I'm getting the correct values. Before we can do anything else, we'll need to identify whether we have a valid group. The groups in the pose node will be named in numerical order. However, we do not have to use that to identify them. Each of the groups has an alias based off the names of the joints. And these will be the name underscore group. We'll use a variable called group and we'll get the group using pose.palm. The parameter is a string which we'll format with f. We'll use the name value in between the braces and then finish it with underscore group. Now I will print again to test and in this case we encounter an issue. With the FK, we are not manipulating the effector, so we do not need to have the effector show up. And in this case, it does not show up. Instead, it says none. So to make sure we do not try to read any of the groups we are not using, I'll create a conditional. If group is not equal to none, and we can now set our values, and the value which we're going to be setting is the rotation but we do not have a rotation yet. We can get our rotation from the matrix. Rot is equal to who.matrix4 dot extract rotates, and the matrix is M. I will then need to set this value on the pose node itself. So I'll need the number of this group. To do this, I will use the group's name. We use the alias to find the group but each of the groups actually has a name, which is group plus a number. 
So to get the correct number to use on all the parameters of the group, I'll need the number at the end of the group's name. I'll create a variable num, and I'll convert this value to an integer with the int function. I'll then get the group's name with group.name, and I'll use two square braces to specify the characters, and the character that I want is negative 1, which will give me the last digit. I can then set my rotation. This will be on the pose node, and we'll need a parameter, but this parameter is not a single parameter. We're going to set a palm tuple, and this palm tuple will be the rotation, and the name for this will be R for rotation, followed by the group number. If you wanted to specify any of the specific parameters as a palm, you'd be R followed by the number, and then followed by either X, Y, or Z. I then apply this, but I actually haven't set the value. To set the value, it will be dot set, and this will be set to our rotation. My bone positions now update, but they do not match my RK. To fix this, I need to update the pose node, and I'm going to need to update how the parameters work. We'll do this by setting the mode for each transform. In this case, I'll need to override the root, and I'll need to set all the bones to post multiply. Once again, I've made a small mistake here. The root needs to be overridden, and the middle needs to be post multiply. I can now test the match transform button, and my transforms are now matching correctly. So everything is now working, but we still have some problems. And fixing this problem is pretty complicated. The problem comes when I try to manipulate the FK. If I attempt to select a control, I have difficulty selecting it. I also have two options showing up for selections of each control. The reason for this is we're reading the compute rig pose as a controller and not just the pose nodes. I only want to read the pose nodes. I do not want to read the compute node. To fix this, I'll need to edit my type properties. Under the node tab, I'm setting the default state, and I'm setting this to the KineFX rig pose node viewer state. Instead of working with this state, we're going to create a custom viewer state. This will be done under the interactive tab. I'm going to press the new button to create a brand new viewer state and I'll leave the settings as default and just press Accept. I'll then need to go to a viewer state browser, and I'll search for the rig pose viewer state. I will right-click on this and select Edit. This will give me the script for the viewer state. I will copy everything, and then I can close this window. I will then edit my custom viewer state template. There is a function called Create Viewer State Template, I will select everything that precedes this function and delete it. I'll then paste the rig pose script here. My create viewer state template should now be right at the bottom of the script, and we'll scroll down to the bottom of the script. And we should now have two copies of the create viewer state template function, one my original, and the second should be from the rig pose viewer state. I'll need to copy a line set up viewer state template and paste this into my version of the create viewer state template function. This line sets up the contextual menu which is in the viewer for the rig pose node. This is the menu which will come up if you right click in the viewer while using the rig pose node. This line will be pasted directly before the return statement for this method. I'll then need to update the method call where it says template.bindFactory. In my version of this method, it is binding a function which is called state, and this is the default method. However, this method no longer exists, and we should be using the pose rig state. The pose rig state is the main function for the script that we have just pasted into this custom viewer state. I can then delete the rig pose version of this function. I'll then apply this, and if I look under my nodes tab, we can see that the default state has been updated. I can now press enter in the viewport, and my functionality is exactly the same as what I had before. 
I then want to navigate the script to look for a specific function. However, this is a very long script. It's about 1700 lines. So I'll use the search function instead. And the function we're looking for is get pose nodes. This function will find all the pose nodes and the compute nodes, which is needed for the rig pose to work. And if you want to use specific pose nodes, you can edit this function to specify them. However, in this case, I'm just going to limit this function to not look for compute pose nodes. So I'm going to edit the part of the function where we set the result. Specifically, I'll edit the conditionals in the for loop. I'll comment out the line where it calculates whether the type's name is equal to a compute rig pose node. I'll then change the conditional from LIF to IF, where it is checking for the KineFX rig pose node. Now it should select my controllers more efficiently. The other thing that I want to update is that I'm not using my effector. So I do not want a controller on my effector. So I'll edit my attach nodes. I'll set this to be not the attribute's name is equal to effector. I now have a working IKFK system and I can match my FK controls to the IK.